Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. All right, good evening, everybody. Rodney Orr, Gary Harris. Anything feel a little different? Not really. Everything feels the same? Yeah. All right, coming to you on Wednesday night this week. Uh, last night we had a big function here with the Chamber of Commerce at our TV station. So, Tider Insider TV brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Great organization doing a lot for West Alabama. Coming to you on a Wednesday evening this week. But we are live, so you can uh, you can call in. We'll take phone calls. It's a regular show just one night later than usual. Next week we will return to our usual Tuesday night at 6.30 time slot. As I said, he's Rodney Orr from Tider Insider. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris, and let's get started, Rodney, as Alabama has added a second nationally rated top 10 quarterback to the 2023 class. Four-star Dylan Lonergan from Brookwood High School in Snellville, Georgia. Big-time athlete, 6'2", 215, uh, strapping, strong guy, also a terrific baseball player. More on that in a moment. But as a football quarterback, he's listed at number 62 on the 2023 ESPN Top 300. He chose Alabama over South Carolina and Stanford with the full intent of playing baseball and football. All three programs said that was okay, including Alabama. He's a first baseman and a pitcher for the Brookwood baseball team. Alabama now has 12 commits in the class of 2023. Let me bring Rodney in. Okay, here's what's interesting to me. You had said all along that you thought Alabama would take two quarterbacks in this class. Of course, obviously, Eli Holstein committed. I think most Alabama fans were hoping for Arch Manning. He commits to Texas. Then I saw a lot of people saying, well, they won't take another quarterback now. No, plans didn't change. And this is not just a Johnny-come-lately. Alabama had been targeting Dylan Lonergan, I understand, for a long time, Rod. Yeah, rarely do you get nowadays two top ten quarterbacks in the same class. You're right, Gary. They had been in on him for a while. Uh, I like a lot of things about him. Obviously, he's a big, strong kid. He's got a really strong arm. You, we're going to talk about the baseball aspect of it later. His dad was a former uh, quarterback in the early 80s to mid-80s at Penn State, mm -hmm. Danny Lonergan. Won a national championship. Yes, was part of a national championship team, a lot of winning uh, there. And, you know, being the son of a quarterback, Gary, you know, he picks up a lot of things. He's been developed really well. So I, I like Dylan Lonergan. I think he's an outstanding prospect. I think it's a big-time pickup because, look, when you're talking about quarterbacks, mm -hmm. getting the numbers right with the way these guys transfer, uh, you can never have too many. All right, now to the baseball aspect. And it isn't always that Nick Saban signs off on this. He sometimes will say, nope, we want the focus to be on football. We don't want you playing another sport. In this case, though, they understand how good a prospect he is in baseball. And let's, let's say this, too. You've got, you know, Bryce Young is going to go to the NFL after this season. There's no doubt about that. But you've got two quarterbacks already on the roster, two very, very good young quarterbacks, and Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson. Eli Holstein's coming in. Because Dylan Lonergan is a baseball player, uh, Holstein's going to enroll in January, you would expect that he'll play his football season in the fall, then play his high school baseball season in the spring. So he probably won't arrive until next summer. Theoretically could set him up for a redshirt year, possibly to be behind a year uh, behind Holstein. They might stagger these guys uh, uh, a little bit that way. That is a possibility because he's going to play both sports. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a good way to, you know, summary of it. it uh, it could possibly, you know, end up that way. Again, a lot of things could change between now and then. We'll see. But he's a guy with a 94-mile-an-hour fastball, very, very strong arm. With that in mind, um, listen, he's a great football player. And I think he's coming to Alabama because he wants to be a part of this national championship football program and play baseball. Uh, but the draft next year, you know, will uh, uh, come in June. How – good a prospect is he? Is there a chance he could be a really high draft pick and then forego college for uh, professional baseball? I mean, yeah, that could certainly happen. Anytime you throw in the mid, you can touch the mid-90s, uh, you're certainly a prospect that is going to catch a lot of attention. Uh, I don't know right now exactly where he might project. Uh, you know, Alabama does have a commitment mm -hmm. from another player as well, athlete. It's probably going to end up a safety, Brayson Hubbard, out of South Mississippi, who's an outstanding mm -hmm. baseball player as well. So, uh, <laughs> They're getting some guys that are dual sport athletes. As a quarterback, I mean, it reminds me a lot of Holstein, to be honest with you. Uh, what, what do you like about Dylan Lonergan? Well, again, big, strong, physical guy. Again, the upbringing, the, the, the pedigree with his father being a quarterback at Penn State, having played for Joe Paterno. I, I think he's a guy that really understands what it takes coming into a big-time program and to make those adjustments. So uh, I really think that when you look at him, he's got all the tools. Well, we've been fought in a long time. You don't win them all in recruiting. You win some, you lose some. Uh, so from a win 
to a loss for Alabama, at least for now. Last Friday night, five-star edge rusher Peter Woods, a powerhouse Thompson High School in Alabaster, committed to Clemson over Alabama. Also had a couple of other schools on his list, but it was those two. 6'3", 265. Uh, he's the highest-rated national prospect from Alabama ever to choose Clemson and uh, in the Dabo Sweeney era. Now, what is unusual about this is that this is a kid that grew up an Alabama fan in an Alabama family. Uh, he's been coming to games at Alabama since he was, you know, young. And from the time he was considered a prospect, it was just an assumption that he would go to Alabama. In fact, he even said he was a lock for Alabama. Clemson, though, with Nick Easton, the defensive line coach, and Dabo Swinney uh, on an official visit, man, they, they turned his head. He said he committed to them at the official visit, went ahead and had a video made. Uh, now, again, again, um, there's still, I think, the door open for him to change his mind along the way before December. Having said that, Rodney, you're in an Alabama family. Your dad went to Alabama. You're considering an Alabama lot. Really, honestly, probably never considered playing anywhere else but Alabama, and he commits to Clemson. What happened? Well, good question. Uh, yeah, I think you use the word assumption there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's a really dangerous word in recruiting. When you have a highly touted player 50 miles up the road like Peter Woods, who is from an Alabama-friendly program, you mentioned the background. I mean, he's a guy that grew up in uh, – three years old, he has a picture at Christmas in his Alabama uniform. So uh, I think a lot of people did assume that Peter Woods was a lock to Alabama, and he, he even said that. On that visit, uh, what, what really surprised me is, and, and we talked about this, we've been talking about this for three weeks now, that we felt he would pick Clemson because he privately committed to Dabo when he was there. That's what really surprised me is he committed to Dabo while he was there with the relationship that he had here at Alabama. Two years he had been being recruited by this coaching staff. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's really something that says uh, what exactly happened here. Uh, and, and, and I think you made a good point. Uh, this isn't over. I, I do think that Peter Woods is the kind of kid that when he committed to Dabo Swinney, when he committed to Clemson, he committed with the intention mm -hmm. of that's where he's going. Uh, and, and I would assume right now that is where he's going. Uh, could it change? Yeah, a lot of things could change over the next four or five months. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, we will. But right now, at least, it is a hit for Alabama in terms of perception and in terms of just a really good player saying that he wants to go elsewhere from nearby Alabaster Thompson High School. All right, Rodney, uh, in this case, this certainly was a young man that Alabama really, really wanted. And I'm not saying that Alabama did not want Elliott Washington the second, the, the defensive back out of, out of Venice, Florida. Uh, he was already committed. I think he was either the first or second commit in the class. Having said that, uh, he decommits and flips to Penn State. And, Rodney, you get the perception that with where Alabama's looking at in the secondary uh, with some guys that they're still recruiting with Tony Mitchell from Thompson High School recently committing that maybe, in this case, Elliott Washington second saw a better opportunity somewhere else. Yeah, I think this will work out really well for him. I, I think, it, you know, again, you, you've got Alabama's recruiting some very, very highly recruited safeties, DBs. Uh, you know, Caleb Downs is still very much a, a – major target right now out of the state of Georgia uh, and Alabama's very strongly in the mix and, and, and others as well. So in that regard, I think, you know, Alabama should be fine. And I think this is a good move for Elliott Washington yeah. to go to Penn State. Excellent football player. His dad, Elliott Washington, was a basketball player at Alabama in the early 90s under Wimp Sanderson, hit that game when he shot in the SEC tournament against Arkansas that everybody remembers. But, yeah, it looks like it might be a good situation for Elliott Washington the second. All right, moving on from recruiting, the Southeastern Conference announced its uh, list of attendees for its 2022 SEC football kickoff media days, which begins on Monday over in Atlanta. And it's a star-studded cast for the Alabama Crimson Tide, representing Bama and speaking to the media on Tuesday. Tuesday will be quarterback Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, outside linebacker Will Anderson Jr., the reigning Defensive Player of the Year and a Heisman Trophy candidate for 2022, and defensive back Jordan Battle as a safety. He's an All-America candidate for 2022. They'll be there on Tuesday. As we said, SEC movie, Media Day is moving to Atlanta this year at the Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame, beginning on Monday and will be broadcast on the SEC Network. And we will be there next Tuesday for Alabama Day, and we'll be live uh, during Tider Insider TV. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, we'll discuss the latest transfers to the Tide baseball and softball programs. Plus, Coach Saban's thoughts on conference realignment and how college football is heading towards mega conferences. 
We'll have that story when we come back. And we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, the phone number, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. You can email us at the address on your screen, TITV at WVUA23.com. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag TITV. We'll be looking for it, and uh, we can get a tweet on as well. So keep it dialed in. The only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, the one, the only, Tider Insider TV will return right after this. You know, there's a lot of tradition that will no longer exist. Uh, and I think we've gone through that to some degree, but I think we're going to deal with it in, you know, a greater capacity than ever before. Um, because I think mega conferences are probably here to stay. And welcome back to TITV, brought to you by Tuscos of Tourism and Sports. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. And that, of course, Alabama head football coach Nick Saban. Speaking with former Crimson Tide quarterback Greg McElroy this week on the Always College Football podcast. Uh, Nick Saban, Rodney, listen, we know he's not afraid of change. He's adjusted to everything that's come down the pike. But I think he's also said for the record that he is a traditionalist. He, there's certain aspects of college football and college athletics that he holds sacred. And, and I think that uh, part of that is – Geography, old-fashioned rivalries, conferences the way that they were, you know, for many, many years. And I do think that we are headed toward uh, these mega conferences that is going to impact and affect the competitive balance of college football. Yeah, you know, and again, we talked about this last week. We've talked about NIL before, and I've said that I think, you know, some of the things, the way it's being used is, is kind of killing the spirit of college football. And, uh, you know, Gary, the same thing with the realignment. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about tradition. I think these are important traditions, the regional, uh, the, the, the conferences, the way they've always been. And, uh, but it's headed in this direction. So uh, I, I think all you can really say is it is what it is because that's the direction we're going. You know, something else Coach Saban talked about, and he's been saying it for a while, uh, you're going to add teams at the conference. Um, you're going to have to add more conference games. I don't see any way around it, whether it's whether it's nine, whether it's ten. And, and you're getting to a point, if you go to mega conferences, that I just don't think fans, it's already difficult enough to get them in the seats. Uh, if you're not playing high-level competition every week, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to have some half-empty stadiums going forward, Ronnie. I think that's something they're going to have to address, too, as they add to these conferences is, is scheduling. At some point, you know, if you're going to have these mega conferences, you're going to have these top-tier schools, they're only going to be able to play each other to keep the interest up, I think, among your fan base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah. So Nick Saban also discussed NIL and said, you know, we're still, uh, we're still recruiting the way that we always have, but clearly NIL could be a factor down the road. And speaking of uh, – Coach Saban, it's time for Coach Talk. Let's hear more from Coach on the always uh, college football podcast with Greg McElroy. He explains a term we've heard him use a lot about NIL, which we just mentioned, and the overall structure of college football, and that's more on competitive balance in regards to what NIL is doing. Let's take a listen. We have no restrictions on who can do what. Some people are going to be capable of doing certain things. Other people are not going to be capable, but the the, the bottom line is, is we'll lose competitive balance, which everything we've always done in college football is to maintain competitive balance. Same scholarship, everybody had to play by the same rules, and whether it was recruiting or whatever. All right, Rod, and, and you're going to have uh... – well, we're going to move on to baseball. I kind of wanted to discuss that a, a little more. Maybe we can – yeah, let's – because I want, I want to come back and talk about that because a lot of people would say competitive balance. You know, Alabama's played in, what, nine or ten national championship games and won six in the last, you know, 13, 14 years. But what he is referring to are the rules. Uh, it's one thing to, to outwork people and get ahead because you're just running a better program. But if you have – no rules, and we know some schools are paying, you know, millions of dollars for players. Others aren't or can't. Uh, that is really going to affect the competitive balance, and quite frankly, it's just not fair. I mean, at it, it, some point, again, and I've said this before, Rodney, who's going to do what? I don't know. I don't know who, who is, and I don't know what they can do. But something will have to be done to reel in this NIL at some point, or it's going to ruin college yeah, football. Yeah, well, we've talked about it Many you know, times. ad nauseum. And, and again, I, I say this, Gary, you look at Miami right now. I mean, they're buying everybody. you talking about Texas A&M last year. They're basically doing what Texas A&M did last year in their recruiting class. They're buying all the top offensive linemen. They're buying several of the top prospects around the country. Uh, that's what they're doing. They're doing things that other schools aren't doing. So until you, 
get that uniformity, uh, have a governing body that can enforce the rules, uh, you know, this thing's going to uh, going to get out of hand. Well said. All right, let's move on. Now Alabama baseball has landed a transfer from Florida catcher Matt Gassetti. And uh, this is a guy who announced on social media he's coming to uh, Alabama. Big pickup. Bama needs a catcher, and he's a guy that played uh, – he started 30 games for the Gators this past season, batted 238 with five home runs and 18 runs batted in. So some help for UA. And Alabama softball has been looking for players, obviously, since losing six to the transfer portal. Landed two more softball transfers for the upcoming season. Michigan left-handed pitcher and utility player Lauren Essman, who has two years of eligibility remaining and uh, has played three at Michigan. She's coming in. And also Faith Hensley from Ball State. Hensley was the MAC player of the year. Both these players really will add some experience and some talent to the Alabama softball team, which, as I said, uh, lost six players to the transfer portal following the 2022 season. Well, still to come on TITV, we'll have much, much more. And we'll be getting to your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Give us a call right now, 205-348-9882. We're back after this. Last night in Hoover, Team USA beat Australia 5 to nothing in softball at the World Games. Former Alabama standout Haley McClinney, three-run double. Boy, she was the star last night. Three for three, three RBI, two runs scored. Current Crimson Tide pitcher Montana Fouts came in and pitched a couple of innings uh, in the victory. She finished with five strikeouts. So uh, Team USA will play its nemesis Japan tonight in the gold medal game. Eight o'clock at the Hoover Met. Welcome back into the program. It's time to get to the phones, and we've got Sammy first up tonight up in Walker County. Sammy, how's it going up there in tomato country, pal? Hello, Gary hey, and Sammy. Rodney. Uh, Gary, the roosters are crowing, and the tomatoes and watermelons are growing. Oh, I'm ready to get a delivery here <laughs> soon. I'll tell you that right now. I, I heard that. Uh, guys, I want to talk about the offensive line because, you know, that is the foundation. That is the key that unlocks the door to this season and to every season, and it's just so important. That's why we talk so much about it, but it, it is that important. And I just hope that, that uh, they come out. they got a new offensive line coach, and I really hope that they, they come out really inspired yep. and everything. And uh, we'll tell. Thanks, guys. All right, Sammy, let me get Rodney in here. Offensive line. Yeah, there is some concern because there's going to be some new starters, uh, but – Eric Walford, the offensive line coach, getting rave reviews, and there's so much talent to choose from. Rodney, I've said this all along. I'm confident they're going to find five guys that they can win with. I think the good thing is the interior's back with, uh, you know, you've got two really good centers, guys that started a lot of games last year. Seth McLaughlin, uh, Darian Dalcourt. You've got Emil Echior, who I think is a potential All-American. They're at the right guard. J.B. and Cohen started uh, all the games last year. Uh, he's back at left guard. And, and then you look at the left tackle. They're bringing in a guy that started 30-plus games at Vanderbilt, Tyler Steen. Uh, Eric Wolford, very familiar with him, recruited him out of high school when he came out of Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, so I think that's a good fit. And I think at right tackle you have a guy, J.C. Latham, that right now I would project. And, and there's going to be competition. Mm -hmm. We know that. But you would probably project J.C. Latham has got to – uh, the early favorite to win that spot. Very, very talented five-star player coming out of IMG Academy a couple of years ago, now be a sophomore. Uh, really looking for big things from him. I think I agree with you, Gary. I think that uh, as this offensive line develops, it has a chance to be a strength, not a weakness. All right, time for an email. And it is our email question of the day brought to you by KDM Services, serving your family like our family, KDM Services, for all your air conditioning and heating needs. All right, what is the latest on Ja'Cory Brooks, Jace McClellan, and Roydell Williams? That's from Jamie and Haleyville. All three of those players dealing with injuries in the spring, Rod. Yeah, I think Jace is going to be fine. Uh, that's a... You know, certainly be a big addition, him coming back uh, to the to the running back spot. And then also, uh, Ja'Cory Brooks, uh, I think he'll be fine as well. He had a great finish to the season last year. Roy Dell, I think Roy Dell's making progress as well. Haven't heard as much about him. You know, his his injury was much later in the season than, than was Jace McClellan's, but I think he'll be fine. All right, more phone calls and emails, 205-348-9882 is the number. Give us a ring. We'll be right back with TITV after this commercial message. And we're back here on TITV. Let's jump right back out on the phone lines. Caleb up in Hubbardville is with us. Hey, Caleb, good evening. Evening. Uh, I, I hope you all are doing okay today. Uh, uh, my question, I was just wondering, uh, since we didn't get Peter Woods, is there any other defensive line prospects that Alabama's in on heavy? 
Oh, Thanks. yeah, Caleb. There's plenty of them right here in the state of Alabama. Other top defensive line prospects outside of Peter Woods. Yeah, I mean, there's Kelby Collins at Gardendale. James Smith is a five-star player out of Montgomery Carver. Hunter Osborne's an outstanding player at Hunter uh, Hewitt Trustville. You've got some outstanding players out of state that they're recruiting. Jordan Renaud out of Tyler, Texas. Edric Hill out of Kansas City, uh, Missouri. And also Jamarius Brown out of South Mississippi is a really good player, Gary. Uh, you know, so they don't lack options for sure. Reuben Bain is another mm-hmm. one, guy that had 29 sacks last year from the Miami area. So, uh, now, he may be a real tough pull from Miami, but uh, he's certainly very high on Alabama. All right, thanks for the phone call. All right, we got Steve. Not sure where Steve's calling from, but, uh, Steve, you're up next. In Trustful. Hey, Steve, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, softball. Since the uh, end of the season, they had uh, several uh, girls transfer uh and are going to the transfer portal. And um, from what I can understand, these were girls that were starters, not girls that were sitting on the bench waiting for playing time. Uh, what do you know about what's going on with the uh, softball program? All right, Steve, um, I'm not really that concerned. Uh, I think it's the new world that we live in with the transfer portal. Yes, six players transferred. Really, really good players. Uh, but Alabama's got a good core of players coming back. They're hitting the transfer portal. Uh, in a perfect world, those players would not have left. But it's not a perfect world anymore at any program, in any sport. And all I know is this, Steve. I've had a lot of people talk about the, the issues with the players leaving Rodney. But you got a Hall of Fame coach. He's won a national championship. He's won more SEC championships and conference championships and tournament championships than I can count. I, I think they're going to be fine. No, I think you hit the nail on the head. That was what I was thinking from the very beginning of the question. Patrick Murphy, I mean, he's got a plan. All right, thanks for the phone calls and emails. We'll be right back to wrap up TITV after this. All right, time flies when you're having fun, even on a Wednesday night. That's going to do it for TITV, presented by Tuscan's Tourism and Sports. Remember, you can find the show anytime online at Titer or at WVUA23.com or at TiterInsider.com. Rodney links it there as well. We're going to leave you tonight with some highlights from Deron Payne's first youth football camp at his old high school, Shades Valley, last week. Current Washington Commanders defensive tackle said he loves giving back to his community over 400.